Hi, I'm Mike. Uh, welcome to my tiny home, Felicity Arnold, shooting from a mountaintop location in Kelowna. This video is sponsored by Nootopia. Get 10% off your cognitive enhancing nootropics and unlock your brain's potential by going to nootopia.com forward slash florb and use code florb10 at checkout and increase your focus today. And remember to subscribe. Uh, I decided about 10 years ago to buy this truck as a tourism operation. It was low kilometer, you know, in great condition, and they have a great track record. The liability of carrying 20 humans around in the back of a monster truck uh, is not profitable these days. And uh, paying rent is also not tangible for me, so the, the common solution was just to live in the truck. I'd never been in a tiny house. Uh, I just knew what I needed to survive, and I looked at the footprint I had available and the total weight. I'm auto body by trade, so welding, electrical, and plumbing kind of fall together, and uh, I've had some related experience just fabricating things and customs, and uh, I, I did a ton of welding, a ton of plasma cutting. You know, these are things that if you had to sub it out, it's gonna take a lot of money, and uh, it, it's actually more rewarding to do it yourself. It, it's hell in the process, but looking back, I don't regret any of it. A few things that were difficult. I mean, there's a lot of things on here I just can't lift, you know, from tires to uh, metal panels. So you had to get creative with, you know, jacks, blocking, hydraulics, you know, to make things move. The initial build took me about 10 months and those first 10 months were hell. It was it was a lot of like all-nighters, you know, my performance at work for my friends did suffer. I put it as a priority to get out of my rent loop. And the day I moved in, I didn't have a sink. I didn't have running water in the truck. My ex at the time, we just kind of lived in this dry container. And every night after work, like a little more got done, a little more got done. Right now, you know, running total, depending on maintenance and how you look at, you know, replacing infrastructure, I'm just north of 50 grand with this truck right now. So this is a retired Colorado National Guard troop carrier. I've converted to a motorhome legally. What you're looking at is a 40 foot C can cut in half, thrown on the back. Floating frame to allow it to flex under these adverse conditions. Air brakes, six wheel drive, Allison transmission, Cummins engine. Uh, pretty much the best thing you could ask for for an overlander in North America. Fire truck horn, because I like the sound of it compared to the stock military one. Um, I've moved my two starting batteries under the hood. There's not another M9 like this that I know of. This freed up space in other areas of the rig for my build. Just something to consider. Um, and then before that, I have a new style Delco alternator, 24 volt, uh, as my military one kind of exploded on me last year. This is a custom bumper I've built for a winch. Uh, this truck's never had a winch. I've never been stuck and I deemed it not required. It holds a vise, um, some blocking equipment, some hoses, some cables, full LED upgrades to all my lighting. I have a barbecue on the front of my truck. That doesn't come down very often actually. 1400 R20 tires, uh, due for new tires. Moving forward to this next compartment. Uh, this is a custom build for my generator and I'm using a 2000 watt inverter generator to charge this whole truck. It does a very good job at 80 cc's. You don't need a big generator to be honest. This is my Greenlee toolbox. It houses a lot of other stuff. Uh, it's a bit of a cantankerous thing to get into. And a bunch of stuff's gonna fall out. But that's how we roll. In here I carry sockets, screwdrivers, electrical kits, MIG welder, a whole bunch of generic stuff to get me out of trouble. So my ladder, uh, they're a bit of a difficult things on overlanders. A lot of guys have them pull out, slide out, carry them. Uh, I still haven't found a better solution for my setup yet. I'd love to have a fold down deck where this is integrated, but for the moment, it's just something I built. Um, it just, it's pretty basic, you know? No matter how I'm parked, the hooks catch. It does the thing, you know, it's a ladder. This is what a new tire looks like. It has tons and tons of tread. Uh, they're made of unicorn skin because I can't seem to find another one like it. Uh, in the middle of that tire, I store my propane tank. It works really good actually. I, I feel safe, secure about where I have this. That's only for the barbecue. It doesn't come down very often either. Uh, looking over the taillights, this racking holds my stairs. Uh, and then I normally tie my bicycle to the lock right there. Uh, coming around to my little toolbox here, it holds petrol diesel fuel, my stinky poo hose, and uh, occasionally a bag of garbage. This side looks pretty blank, but at that top corner, it's still winterized as my AC unit. That's a window shaker. It's 5,000 BTU. It's not really enough to do the job. And in the future, I would like to put a split AC unit on this truck, uh, a heat pump. And I, I do believe that's the way to go in the future. 
On the side, I have a fuel tank, which is 80 gallons. And right now that's gonna cost about $600 to fill. Uh, that's doubled since I bought the truck. Something to consider, these are still the good old days. That's cheap, it's gonna get worse. I'm pretty happy about my pinstripe. Uh, this is a Mad Max Fury war rig sticker. I'm not that artsy, so for me to do something like that's pretty rare and I love it. It's a, it's a cool tattoo for the truck. Um, moving ahead of that is my faithful old chainsaw. Uh, it's been outside for five years in this location and it'll start sucking pull. It's, it's great. It's just an old workhorse. Okay, back in the cab. This is largely stock in here. When I first bought it, I wasn't sure how to drive it. They're, they're basic, they're very basic. It's just a different kind of tractor. Transmission's automatic. It doesn't shift like a normal automatic. It's kind of more like a big red three-wheeler. Um, you kind of have to tell what to do. And this switch bank I've added, I could use three times as many switches. There's always more stuff to put on switches. I've got this good uh, Bluetooth CD player. I love a good CD player. This fan was a, was a major improvement to my life. Uh, by blowing heat down from the surrounding area, also from my wood stove. It's better than the stock heater it came with. The seat I'm sitting in is not comfortable. It's a spring seat. I'm always sitting tight. And if, if you do like a thousand kilometers in a day, it will beat the hell out of you. Uh, the, it's kind of a young man's toy in those kind of kilometers. The seat for the passenger is actually an air ride seat, which is far more comfortable than my seat. And uh, chivalry isn't dead, that's all I'm gonna say. It's very convenient for my build that this truck was a convertible, so it had a soft top. I simply wanted to not hit my head on the roof anymore of the truck, so I removed the top and I built a flex seal all around the truck. 32 feet of 18-inch uh, uh, rubber roofing, double layered, you know, bolted every four inches all the way around um, to give me a flexible seal. Uh, it's working pretty good. It's got a couple uh, injuries on it, but uh, it's, it's fine overall. In my world, I'm good with it. What I didn't want was a narrow little pass-through. Again, so I've utilized this convertible nature of my truck. I did cut out a bit of the back wall. I removed the factory battery box that was down here and the bench seat to allow for this air ride seat. Which brings me back to the main heating unit. This stove cost me a couple hundred bucks to build. I used just a, a regular wire feed MIG welder, nothing too sophisticated. Um, I'm using a stainless steel chimney as opposed to the flimsy, rusty ones you buy from Home Depot or, or Home Hardware. The unique thing about my stove compared to anything you're going to buy on the market is that I'm using a hot water heating system that I've built. Um, via a sidearm heat exchanger, it becomes a hydronic heating system where my engine's heat is recycled and recovered and then converted to my drinkable hot water. And vice versa, when I heat my stove, it heats my water. With a circ pump, it heats up my antifreeze. So at minus 40, my Cummins will start. Uh, I don't have a place to plug it in most of the time. It doesn't even have a block heater. Uh, this has gotten me out of a jam a few times with low batteries. And I'll hang stuff over here on these hooks. Um, I used some Unistrut around the top. I didn't know what I wanted to build exactly. And Unistrut allows you to be pretty flexible with your build. Um, if you come in from the rain and your boots are soaked, you hang them over the stove. They're dry by the morning. Yeah. Pretty easy. So this is my very tiny little bathroom and it's bigger than most builds bathrooms. This is a regular RV flush toilet. If you're not too concerned about the weight of your wastewater, these are like 200 bucks. I don't have to worry about what goes in it. If someone else is using the bathroom, you can't break it. It's, it's pretty much bulletproof. My toilet actually drains into a 40 gallon black tank and it lays on the floor. Um, it takes up this whole space underneath the bathroom. I've left all of my plumbing inside the vehicle. So all of my tanks are insulated above the floor. Um, so at minus 30, nothing freezes on my rig. I have water every day. I'm not running electric heaters to do that. And then moving forward, uh, I've actually got a 30 by 30 shower, full sized. The shower is recycled from a previous build. I have a 40 gallon gray tank for my shower water. And all the water is heated uh, via the wood stove. Um, so again, I don't use propane to heat my hot water. If the stove's not on, I don't have any hot water. It's, it's pretty basic. Some of the materials I sourced for this build were actually pretty special. This truck is kind of known as the Muskogan Embassy. All of the lumber in this truck stood as a fence in the Limberlost Lodge for 60 years, which was the first resort in Muskoka. So there's a lot of really cool history here. I had a lot of fun bringing this wood back from the dead. Hemlock is great. If you can get it, it's kind of like cedar. It doesn't mind the water. Um, you can abuse it. I can put a thumbtack on my wall anywhere. And you just don't see that in new panel and builds. Moving forward to my kitchen, my cabinets are 2000 watt kitchen cabinets. Uh, they have towel holders, so it's Martha Stewart approved. A couple years ago, I had a microwave sitting here at 600 watts. Now it's a 2000 watt speaker. Over here, I had some like essential oils and dishes. Now not so much, and I wouldn't trade it back. These things are ear piercing. 
I love it. I absolutely love my stereo system. My rig is a little different from most. The only cooktop I have in here is my wood stove. It gives me a lot more counter space. Um, you know, you always have the option of bringing in another butane or propane device. Uh, all I really use as a backup is my jet boil. I mean, it normally, that's where I make my coffee in the morning before the wood stove's hot. You know, keep it simple. Well, this build's five years old now, and it's seen a lot of damage, a lot of beat. It's, it's, it's beat up, I, I'm not gonna lie. So everything in here, I wanna actually update and upgrade. And I mean, that's probably just par for the course of how long I've lived in here. Um, to do this again, this would be a st steel ball bearing toolbox with central locks, something that could take the shock of my life. And uh, then you pull the drawers out, you can hide stuff in behind it, like infrastructure, like plumbing and electrical. So word to the wise, get some sturdier cabinets if your truck rides rough. Most of my solar energy goes to refrigeration. It's not efficient to use a fridge like this, but it's cost efficient. Well, these fridges run for about 250 bucks at Walmart. It is straight AC. There's lots of people spending $1,500 on fridges. I don't think it's necessary. This used to be a table that folded down and had a couple of bar stools under it. Uh, it's not enough, you know, I wanted more. So I built this cabinet for four 18s. Uh, they're all sealed. Uh, the subs are rated for 2,500 watts each. They're all sharing a 5,000 watt amp. This will activate any Karen from a very long distance. It will bring bylaw from any, any time of night. Bylaw will show up. Uh, so you have to be careful how you run these things. I keep earplugs on my wall. Um, my favorite DJs have played in here and any other cool DJs that wanna you know, hit my aux cord, hit me up. This is, a, this is a scene. I carry this one poster with me. This is a Hobo Dynasty. It means a lot to me. It's, it's a dude living on the back of an elephant. You know, I, that's, that's me. That, that's, that's my life. I've got a caution rave bear sign here because, you know, they're around. They'll, they'll mess with your stuff. I think they live in, in this truck, actually. My dog, he's set up on the bed today. Uh, he's been named Tinnitus for obvious reasons. This is my high-tech heavy-duty fan. You can reverse the direction of it and you can push air in or out of the rig and it's not hard to set up a filter behind it either if you're in a dusty conditions like Burning Man. These are component sets for Alpine Type R's and before I put the big system in this truck, these were the only speakers I had in here and they are very accurate. I absolutely love them and I enjoy watching the wiring so my crossovers are exposed. During some urban exploration in New Brunswick, uh, I found this old window laying against a barn and uh, I decided to save it. It actually f it fit my space. Stickers from great, great people on here. Many, many Many memories and uh, it's it's just nice to take a look and remember what you've done and who you've met so in here this is basically my bookshelf I keep just random stuff toiletries I mean I don't have a, a vanity in my kitchen I'm a, I'm a bachelor I don't need that stuff um, I just need a place to store my stuff you know as I built this truck, bed size is a huge issue for people. And I built this for a queen. I'm actually just using a double. Uh, that gave me a lot of extra storage space around the ends for like extra blankets, towels, pillows. And I think that's something people should be wary of is your maximum bed versus your mattress. Because when you got to tuck that sheet on, how are you going to do that in the back corners? Uh, Learn the hard way. Underneath my bed, it's it's a bit of a hound's breakfast, to be honest. Um, I store stuff in bins. I love my bins. And looking underneath here, although my wiring looks super janky, and it is, you know, no refunds, it works. And when it doesn't work, I scramble, I repair it, I keep going. Um, I just recently replaced my inverter to a beautiful MultiPlus, made by Victron Energy, actually, and I'm, I'm very impressed with it so far. I should have started with a higher quality inverter. My solar is uh, PWM. A good friend of mine donated this to my rig uh, when my last one exploded. I'm using approximately 1200 watts of solar right now. I'm actually managing a 24 volt system with 12 volt batteries. So currently I'm using eight group 31 uh, deep cycle batteries at 100 amp hours each. As far as charging goes, I have the uh, options to charge either via my solar, my generator, or my alternator. And I'm right here, I can split my batteries between starting batteries and uh, house batteries. Uh, which is pretty handy when you have to rebuild your battery pack in the winter and you just flip your starting batteries, you know, nothing has to shut off. Many, many sketches, many sleepless nights where just ideas would pop into your head and you're like, I gotta write this down, I gotta think about this. And so many torn up lists. And, and I think that's the key to building something like this is just get it on paper, look at it, criticize it, scrap it, revise it. And by the time you hit like version 10 of something, you've, you're working on it, you know? Version one's never gonna work. I've learned uh, a certain confidence in not knowing what's going on around me, not having to plan, just, just being in the heat of it. And uh, in those misadventures, you find a lot of joy. 
I find joy helping other people when their adventures go south and I roll up and they got their arms up, they're, you know, they're like, what are we gonna do? And it's like, well, I got a welder and some time and some power. Like, you're like, let's fix this thing. It blows, it, I've made a lot of good friends that way. And uh, that's kind of kept fueling my journey with this truck. If I could redo this project, I would start it five years sooner to just get life going. I mean, gas was cheaper five years before, you know, like the, far, the further you go back, the cheaper things were. These are the good old days now. So, I mean, if you're thinking of building something grand, do this now, because in 10 years, I don't know if it's going to be possible. I would say if you're considering this lifestyle and you don't think you have the skills, your, your doubt is unnecessary. You will learn by your mistakes. You'll become wise by your follies. It's very important for your own confidence to fail, you know, to, to push. And you'll inspire others along the way and others will lift you up as you go. Everyone is looking for something that will give them an edge and nootropics are a way to get that edge. Nootropics are supplements specifically designed to help you focus more intensely, block out distractions, enhance your creativity and a whole lot more. Bioptimizers has pioneered a number of safe and effective nootropic formulas. You'll be amazed at how quickly they work. You'll feel the effects within 15 to 30 minutes. These nootropics by Bioptimizers are formulated by one of the most advanced brain chemists and nootropic formulators around today. Every nootropics formula is customized to you based on your strength, weaknesses, and goals. And the best part is these formulas have a full one year guarantee. So there's zero risk for you to try it out. So here's the deal. If you felt held back either personally or professionally, then you owe it to yourself to try out Bioptimizer's nootropic formulas. Get 10% off your nootropics today by going to the link in the description and going to newtopia.com forward slash Florb and use code Florb10 for 10% off your cognitive enhanced supplements your nootropics today and feel the increase in focus thank you for watching have a great week